something wrong. Something has to be wrong. Hey, my sister, the point. one of my most asked questions especially as of recently and of course based on the title that question is why did I stop eating meat and I decided in this video to tell you guys the real reason I stopped eating meat um, I'm asked very often why did I stop eating meat when did I stop eating meat how long ago has it been pretty much the same thing right Firstly, let me apologize for that background noise if it's affecting the audio. I'm trying to speak as loudly as possible. Um, I don't know. I guess that's just the AC or something in the apartment. Anyways, um, let's get right into it. So, let me get the easier part of the question out of the, out of the way. How long has it been since I stopped eating meat? Um, about four or five years. November 2017 was the last time I ate meat and it wasn't a trial and error type of thing i didn't pause and didn't take a break i've been consistently a non-meat eater ever since november of 2017 so that's that's four years a little over four years because i'm filming this in december of 2021 on the cusp of 2022 so that's a little over four years now i've been a non-meat eater that's the easy part of the question yeah for the more <laughs> For the more complex part as to why I stopped eating meat, I've asked this by family, friends, strangers, etc. And I always tell people that the answer to this question is there's a short version and there's a long version. I usually give people the short version, especially if it's a stranger and I'm just like, okay, boom, this is it. That's it, right? Keep it pushing. Um, the long version, nobody knows about this. I, so what I'm about to explain expound on here nobody knows it's the first time i'm really talking about it the only person who really knows why would be my doctor myself and probably one other person my parents don't know my family doesn't know nobody knows especially my mother she has no idea right <clears throat> so i always say that whenever i'm going to make this video our video this video because i'm always asked this question constantly 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 even especially since recently as of sunday and today is tuesday right i'm always asked this question um i always say that whenever i'm going to share and, and i want to be comfortable it's when i'm comfortable and i want to share my story so that i hope we can save somebody and that yeah somebody can learn from it because we all go through these things nobody really speaks on it or a little person share their experience so it's more like a testimonial slash story time slash the truth basically um so i'll give you guys a short version first and whether it's a short version or a long version, both versions of this um, reason or my answer, both versions of this answer, they're correct, they're true. So it's not like in the short version I tell people that to get them off my back and it's a lie. It is just as much truthful as the lengthier version of the real reason why I stopped eating meat, right? So let me address the short answer to the question firstly and get that all the way if you guys have watched my get to know me video which you should have i'll link it somewhere up here or in the bio you would know that i'm a pescatarian and what that means i expound on that in my get to know me video and i've asked in the video or i stated in the video rather that if persons would like to know why i really cut off meat da -da -da, cut off meat of my diet um they may ask and i may do a video on that and Prior to that video, I've always been asked the question, and it, like I said, is even up until recently, I have been bombarded with this question a lot, and I do feel comfortable now um, sharing, right? Um, so yes, in my get to know video, I explain that I'm a pescatarian, what that means, etc., etc. Um, so now I'm ready to actually really delve into how that came about. So the short version to the answer or the shorter answer is that growing up so firstly i'm 
a country girl. I'm from Jamaica. I was born in the parish of Westmoreland and lived there for a little bit, you know. Then my parents moved to St. Elizabeth and that's where I really remember, remember most of my childhood and adult, into adulthood, etc. And you know, you turn big, college, you go to Kingston, I was in Barbados. Also, in the Get to Know video, I expound on what I am, what I do, my profession, a lawyer, this, that, etc. So those are some of the things I'll also be touching in into this video to give you guys a proper story so that you can completely understand how this entire thing and this entire life decision came about right so growing up as a country girl um you know i grew up i grew up around people raising chicken cow goat this that everything so it was pigs so it wasn't uncommon for me to like see these things being or hear of these things being slaughtered you know to sell us meat or to provide for sunday sunday dinner because you know in jamaica sunday dinner is a big deal my, my grandmother used to cook one whole table of different meat chicken um goat pork or chicken for three different meat, meat <laughs> on sunday my mother used to say um <laughs> feast today and famine tomorrow because if it was up to my grandmother my mom would go shopping for her and she'd cook out the whole of the meat on one day for the week. She cooked for the rest of the week, you know, but you see that Sunday? So how Americans make a big deal out of their Thanksgiving or their that's a regular Sunday dinner for us, like, psh, all the time. Or we make a big deal out of Christmas dinner, but yeah. So it's pretty much like that, right? So basically, I'm trying to say that it's not uncommon to see these. I feel like I'm speaking so quickly. I don't know why. Anyways. Basically, I'm trying to say that it's not uncommon for <laughs> for me to see or hear about animals being slaughtered. Is this recording? Oh, okay, come with us to hear chat. Um, being slaughtered. Um, so when I was from I was small, I've never been a big meat eater. Um, my mom could be a, could give a testimony about this. I've never been a big eater. My mom is a big fan of pork and all those things and I've never been a big meat eater. I've always like asked for the gravy and rice and all of that. But you know, growing up, you have to eat what your parents cook. You have to eat what your parents cook, especially my mother, my feet where she cook. I'm not going around the stove as an eight year old or a six year old or nine year old to um, prepare something for myself. So I usually eat what my mom cooks and it's always meat. Um, obviously now and again she do fish and shrimp and I grew up near the seaside so seafood wasn't hard for me to get um yeah I I've always liked seafood lobster shrimp this that fish all the works um yeah so basically growing up I've never liked meat that much my mommy used to say that my chest too high it's hard to feed me and yeah I'm always a fan of green juice you see all everybody's on this natural wave right now and i love that i've always i can connect more with people now like that because i've always been that kid that i want blended juice i want this i want that i love vegetables as a child so it was always i was always like that right um i remember you see if i <laughs> you see if my mother was raising chickens she had a chicken coop and everything and i see chicken on my dinner table that evening and one chicken missing out the coop it cannot pass my throat it was like a mental thing i had a block i just i couldn't swallow so i've always been like that i, I wouldn't have to see the chicken being slaughtered it's nothing sorry it's just the fact that there's chicken on my table there's chicken missing from the coop i'm gonna just add it up and i'm like uh -uh, i'm not eating them. those were my pets i'm not eating them <laughs> So basically the short version that I give people is that I've always been a, I've always not been a fan of eating meat ever since I was small. I didn't have much choice when I was younger, but as I grew older, especially during college and I was cooking for myself, it was, I was, I had more control over what I consumed and therefore that's when I stopped eating meat. That's the short version, yeah? Now so the, wrong, the long version, which again I must say that both versions are completely true both versions are just completely true i've just never expounded or spilled my guts as as it relates to this side of the story so it's a first for me i don't know how i how i would react because 
I haven't oh, thought about it in a long time or really like thought of sharing it. But anyways, I'm willing to share now. So yeah, I got myself a little drink. <laughs> you guys have to really follow me now because I'm about to backtrack a little bit from prior to November 2017. Remember that's the date I said I went um as a non-meat eater, vegetarian. Um I literally went cold turkey. It wasn't a transition for me. I didn't slowly fade into it. It was cold turkey, I'll explain on what that means some more, etc. etc. So prior, so let me tell you, okay. So in 2017, timeline. So follow me. So in 2017, I was in law school. I was at Normal Man Law School, finishing up, and I've already, I would have already had my bachelor's in law, and now I'm at the stage of doing my bar exams and really um, becoming certified to be to practice as an attorney at law. So I was at the cusp of it. I could smell the success, everything. I was right there. I just had a year left. When did I graduate? I just had a year left or something. I don't remember, but I was in law school, yeah? Um, I was in law school and so, yeah, in June, is it June or July of 2017, um, an, an unfortunate incident happened where I, wait, now let's think about it. I was finished on I was entering second year law school by 2017 and I graduated 2018 final year. That's how it is, right? I graduated. Right, so I would have done one set of bar exams and about to do two because there was two. We didn't run any normal money law school is two years for regular people, meaning not direct entrance. Um if you guys know what I mean. Um yeah, so anyways, same difference I was in law school. I was at Norman Law School in 2017. In June or July of 2017, an unfortunate event happened where I lost my aunt. And the circumstances surrounding how I lost my aunt um, really affected <laughs> my decision, or let me say impacted, really impacted my decision in um, eradicating meat from my diet when I did in November so follow me so November 2017 completely cut out meat went cold turkey never ate meat again we're looking at June July 2017 so months prior to November um, I lost my aunt and how I lost my aunt was to colon cancer I lost my aunt to colon cancer and this aunt and I were very close pretty dear to me I didn't even get to see my aunt before she left. She was in, so was in Turks and Caicos when she died. She was over there working, you know, go up to work, make a better life here, family, etc. That's my aunt in June, July of 2017. It was on Father's Day. So if you guys remember when was Father's Day in 2017, you can comment and let me know because right now making this video, I am not sure of the exact date, right? But she died in 2017. All right, boom. Oh, I've said that so many times. Um. So that's happened when you're in when you finish your when you're in law school right when you're in law school when you finish the first year of law school normal man in law school you have to do these you have to do this this internship and it's mandatory you cannot graduate without doing this internship and it has to be a minimum of 10 weeks so as soon as gradu as soon as graduation as soon as my my first set of bar exams were over I started my internship because it was 10 long weeks and also my mom and I had already like had plans to travel to the United States to visit my my brother because his wife um, was due at the time to give birth to my to my nephew and I didn't want to miss that yes so all of this is happening in 2017 my aunt has passed that that took the family so unexpected so sudden um with a day with this dead bury me on this that i have my internships which i have to do um and then i have to finish just in time so that i could get to travel to the states with my mom to visit my family here 
So during this time, during this time, we're looking at between June 2017 and September 2017. Yes, June 2017, September, August 2017. Sorry. My I started noticing like changes as it relates to my my health right and not in a good way so at the time how old was I we're talking about four years ago I was about 23 about to turn 24 because I'm born in October um, so yeah I was young I was younger than I am now and I started notice, noticing really bad changes as it relates to my health and to be more specific, I started noticing that I had constipation issues and this was something that I've never, ever, 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 ever had an issue with. Never in my whole life. My mom said I never had an issue with it um, when I was a baby. Nothing like that, right? I started experiencing constipation issues. And of course, it started out not as severe where you get a bathroom and you just strain a little and you're, you're just like okay i need to drink more water or i need to do this or i need to do that and you try to make those minor adjustments to your diet you're probably not as consistent but then when you do nothing about it and you really don't know the root cause of the issue you um just continue with these bad lifestyle um habits basically and that's what i did okay finish my internship auntie dead very um, finished my internship, maybe my mother gone a foreign, and while there, it, my, 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 my health issues just got worse, and I remember just being like, in so much pain, excruciating pain, as it relates to when I wanted to go to the bathroom, I used to, I, I wasn't going as frequently as I should, and I was just noticing these changes and they were just really like messing with me mentally and physically of course they were affecting me um whenever it was time to go it was really painful all of that right so i remember even asking my sister and my brother at the time if i was supposed to go to the doctor over here in the states because of course i'm visiting etc what would the process be like how would i be covered how would the payments go how expensive do they think it would be at this time also I was like suffering in pain because this is me asking the question generally not telling anyone until today maybe when they see this video they'll know not telling anyone what what was happening right I was just asking the questions generally I kid you not I was suffering in silence and that was my choice and anyways so um of course they told me um like who goes to the emergency room what is of course they asked what is happening and i can't remember the answer i gave but i never really told anybody what was happening okay so come back from foreign now come back from foreign about september yeah come back from foreign about september um started started my second year of law school now yeah so i was just about finished right so starting my second year of law school now remember my law school like i said my program was two years um started my second year and the pain just got worse whenever i went to the bathroom it was it was <laughs> it was a struggle to go to the bathroom guys that's something as simple as pulling on your clothes going on the toilet boom and you're done it was it became challenging for me i dreaded it i knew i knew the pain that i would experience i was in so 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 much pain you guys you guys have no idea i was in so much pain that i didn't want to eat because eating obviously means that i'm going to have to excrete right and that is what hurts if you put it in you're going to have to come out but obviously we need to eat uh, regular painkillers weren't helping i was in so much pain all right come back to law school now come back from foreign started my second year of law school and second year is no joke um pretty much just as challenging going through law school you have court attendance you have your assignments and work you have this start i just finished the internship there's just a whole lot happening right um and i'm my i realize my health is 
be jeopardized or my health is not at its optimum at this point. All right, September trickle down, trickle down, trickle down to get later later into September into October. And I was in, my pain got worse. Let me describe what was happening basically. I was just starting to feel some excruciating pain, more like at the side, at my sides. Um, it was as if I had appendix issues. I never really knew much about appendix or this or that. But when I went on Google and all of this, Google is saying it's appendix. So again, I'm suffering in silence at this point. Um, and I'm just like, oh my God, have my appendix ruptured? Is this what it feels like? So I'm really, 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 really bad pain. Guys, let me tell you about the pain, but the pain by certain point when the big God take me. I'm not even joking. My big God take me because I'm like, God, if this is what this pain is like, just, or just lay your hands for me and just ease the pain for a second. No painkillers, no nothing could help. I was just begging God to just help me just take me i didn't want to die because i know my purpose and my plan on this earth is not yet fulfilled but why if this is what living is like and if, I, if i'm going to have to live like this for the rest of my life i don't know i don't know this is not it this is not it i was in some serious pain i mean i don't have my belly i don't have my back i don't have any floor and at this time i was living uh it wasn't on campus but it was um I was living with a bunch of other college girls, about six or seven, no, or seven or eight of us in a house, like a townhouse, and I had my own room, everything, and I was just in my room, so running silence on the floor. I didn't know what to do and where to go. When I went to the toilet, I didn't know how to sit, the way how pain up clapped me. I don't understand. <laughs> I wouldn't wish it on my enemy. Jesus Christ, I'm a ball day in, day out. A sleepless night, some serious pain, and at this point, me not drop the ball on my courses, on my classes. No one knew. I never made it an excuse. Group work was coming up. I'm always acing my shit. I'm always like holding up my end and weight when it comes to like group work assignment. This that I'm not dropping the ball on school, and I'm just in the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. I thought cramps was bad until I had this experience. So, um, I, start, I went to, as soon as I came back from Jamaica, uh, from overseas, sorry, like I said, at normal money, um, I started going to the doctor. Like I said, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a student, so when you're a student, you have a health card which allows you to visit the clinic, and basically you get coverage as a student, right? There you get student insurance or whatever they want to call it. So the health insurance has some student coverage. So you can visit the clinic, which is on the campus, this is the campus, because normal one last one is situated on the University of West Indies campus, for those who didn't know. So of course I could visit the clinic that's at UE and also at the hospital. But um yeah, so that's what I did. I started visiting the doctor because I was just like, nah man. This me, me used to think I guess, can you know what I mean? So I guess I pay or whatever Jamaica love say I guess I drink tea till me week. I naturally love tea, but this time I was just like holding it on tea. Me, I said, no man, this is not gas pain, this is not regular pain. I've never felt this pain in my life. So I started I started I started visiting the doctor, right? Visiting the doctor, telling her my symptoms. And at this point now, this lady is just sending me to do a bag of tests. She wasn't sure what was wrong, so she keeps sending me to the to the hospital to do a bag, to do a lot of examinations. So we there was also a pelvic examination because they thought they were thinking that my, my pelvic was inflamed i had some pelvic inflammatory something they're thinking it's a uti they're just thinking they're thinking it's, an, it's my appendix they've they, they, they checked for all of that it was none of the above none so and at this time remember so this guys is not happening in one day it's having it's happening over a course of a time weeks in between and at this point it's not like i'm getting any sort of ease from the pain the pain is still at that very bad level or even getting worse um and i'm going to doctor him in and out in and out and i'm at this point where i'm just like i just want to know and why i mentioned the whole aunt thing prior to november 2017 is because remember that my aunt has just passed from colon cancer 
right? My aunt has just passed on colon cancer. And the worst thing you can do is when you're in pain or when you think you have something is to go to Google. Because Google will let you think you have what you don't have. So of course I make a Google of colon cancer, I make a Google of all these things. And um, when I'm seeing the symptoms and certain similarities, I'm just thinking the worst at this point. I kid you not, I'm just thinking the worst. And that's why I make her say, I used to feel some pain because like, God just take me, just take me, please. Just, we just want to eat a sin from heaven, come down and lift me up and bring me up there and give me a week's break from this pain. I'm feeling so much pain, guys. I'm not ready to sleep, I'm not afraid to eat. I don't understand. And I still had my classes, I still had court. I had so much going on. And I just did feel like I did a dead door. And I just started to think the worst. I just started to think the worst. I was, I was really depressed. I was really sad. I was suffering in silence. And that was my choice. Because I was, I didn't want to tell my family so that they would worry. And their worry would make me worry more. And instantly, I, I, I thought of my mom. And I thought of her the most. Because I was like, God, if I make it out of 2017 into 2018 I'm so grateful because the most of pain me I feel me feel like me dead it's door honestly and I just was like how unfortunate it's going to be for my mom to lose her sister and her daughter in the same year right and or maybe from similar things and them things that me I think you know me not don't even know like I may just, I may just say how oh, she will manage who will take care of her my brother the overseas nobody in family how she will come back from this hope oh, i just didn't see my mom bouncing back from this i just didn't see it i just didn't see it and i was just like that's you have to find what happened to you you have to live for your mother you have to live for yourself but you have to be there for your mother you have to be there for your mother right and um at this point i was continuously going to doctors doctors doing one bag of examination in my feel my pelvic area, one bag of exam, routine exams, this, that, they might check for everything under the sun, right? And um, I remember one day when I went to UA for an examination, um, it was, what did the examination mean? It was a, one of those pelvic ones, so now they're going to check my, my ovaries. And when you go for this examination, your bladder has to be full has to be full you have to drink a whole heap of water a lot of water until it feels like you're on the verge of peeing yourself but you just have to hold it until the examination is done and you can just release your bladder right so prior to the prior to the to the examination i'd have been drink, i think i think you can't eat a few hours before also so then give you the instructions what not to eat did it start drinking water from this time straight up to the examination with like a lot of water feel like you're gonna pee, pee yourself paper cell etc um so i went in for the examination and so same on the same campus if you know you eat it's a big campus so i got the referral from the doctor at the clinic to go to the, to go to the radiology unit at ue and do the exam there went for my exam um feel like more piece of myself <laughs> and i did the examination so i remember it was a female doctor who did it and she did the examination and you know of course you're nervous because she have up on the screen she, she, she's there with the monitor and you can't read with them or read but you're watching the doctor for their reaction because you're nervous as hell you want to find out what it is so you can you guys can start curing it and yeah but at the same time you don't want to hear the worst because you're already like so scared right so you know me i'll watch her me i'll watch her while she did it do what she needs to do. do. Um, I mean, I watch her say she will be no reaction, and she's not. She's poker face the whole time. The doctor basically, this 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 female, this young lady, basically told me, "Oh, there's nothing to worry about. Um, you can get dressed, go and release your blood, get dressed, and you can leave, and you'll get the re the report because you know there is there needs to be a written report from the." radiologist to for me not to bring back to my general practitioner so she can see what they have stated making it can't be a word about thing oh, me tell me, oh the doctor said this no it, there needs to be an official report so she said okay of course the report is going to take some time da, 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 da. so 
I felt relieved on one hand that okay it's nothing to worry about but then of course I'm still confused because the pain has not subsided the pain is just as bad as it was before if anything it is getting worse as the time goes on and nothing is being done to fix this underlying issue so okay there's nothing to worry about but what is happening this this is not normal it's not cramps it's not cramps the mental health people, the only thing I didn't like to do is go on that toilet and see one bag of blood just come out. I don't know if that's TMI for some people, but I'm being truthful. Just see one bag of blood just gush. Because at this point, I just feel, I just feel like my organ is damaged, something wrong. Something has to be wrong. This is not natural for a 23 year old to be walking around with this much pain in her lower tummy or, 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 or her pelvic area. It's not natural, it's not normal. It's not normal. Many of us have medical school, you know, say, mm -mm, that's not normal. So, I was still like, wait, but wait. So, the report wasn't going to be ready the same day. So, of course, now I got just went back to my um, my house at the time, or where I was living in Kingston. And, of course, maybe I continue to go to school. Me just have continued with life as best as possible. I'm just continuing with life as best as possible. Assignments and this I come from left right and center I like I said I didn't drop the ball on school for a second because I had a plan I was just like if I'm gonna die I'm gonna die at the top of my class and I kid you not I didn't die thank god I'm here today but I did finish at the top of my class but so I'm one of the few persons who you know anyways so I was just like something have to be wrong something have to be wrong because when a pain I come from, you know, you know, you know, you know, start and stop and I like when my period I come, this pain is consistent and it's not easy enough. So of course now when the report is ready, I think they called me to say it's ready or I had checked back or some sometime after and I went there to pick up my report. When I went to pick up my report, the the um, consultant for radiology, I don't know how many of you know how um, the medical field is but when you're a consultant, that's a very high level compared to when you're, um, you know, a general professional. So he was a consultant for the whole radiology unit, right? Love this man. Love this man. I don't know if I know why. So I went to pick up my report and, of course, I guess he would have, he would have to view our sign-off and all the examinations that were done on patients who come in for whatever reason. So... I went in for the examination. I went in for the report, sorry. I went in for my report just to pick up my report. But this man instead stated that he'd like to examine me himself. So I say, why? I think, hmm, okay. So he's like, he'd like to examine me himself. Um, yeah, just to examine me himself. I don't know. So, of course, at the time, I wouldn't have drink a massive amount of water to cause my blood to be filled because I wasn't going in for an examination in my mind so I, I can't remember if he sent me back to do the examination schedule it for another day seeing that I wouldn't have I would have been prepped for it or I just tried to drink as much water around the same time stay there do the examination like an hour later I can't remember but he he did the examination right he did the examination and Basically, the examination, long story short, the examination revealed that I had cysts on my ovaries. And this was devastating for me. This was so devastating. Because when a woman hears about her ovaries or her cerebral reproductive organs, them and everything, you start wondering and I'm just like, oh my god, I'm so young, I'm 23, I'm going to school. Your whole life flashed before you. I mean, I still not die, right? So he told me I had cysts on my ovaries. And I wasn't even sure how to... <laughs> I wasn't even sure how to conceptualize the information because I had so many questions. I didn't even know where to start. Right? I'm... At that point, I was one, really wondering if it was questions I wanted answers to in the moment, but then I know myself and I know I wanted answers. I like to know what's happening, right? 
and especially from an informed person such as himself, me want more. So just lay it on me. Just lay it on me. Me go home, go lie down in the dark later and depressed. I don't talk to nobody, but I want to know. So, he told me that. So he told me that, and he told me the set, he, he showed me the, the report now that I would have, that the previous female doctor would have done um, prior, which was what I came to pick up, um, or thinking that I would come to pick up. So, I'm wondering, and I think he was wondering why she told me not to worry, because I think he asked me, what did she say? I can't remember. But I think he told me, he was wondering why she told me not to worry when there was a, they were, the size they were, were very small. I can't remember the, 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 the measurement, but it was very, very small. But compared to putting a dot in your hand is small based on the palm of your hand, right? So you're comparing it to what the dot, the surface, the surface it is on. A cyst, no matter how small or large, on your ovaries, which are some small, small, small organs, is going to be bigger than if you were supposed to probably hold it in your hand or put it on the floor right so small is relative compared to what you're comparing it to basically the surface that it is placed on right so when he gave me the report i saw that the report stated that i had two and the measurement the measurements for both so he was wondering why she told me not to worry because of course they're at a stage that they can be managed um without surgery, etc, etc. So, he told me to get dressed and I got dressed and we went to his office because no, we're going to have a one-on-one -on -one and do what the good doctors need to do. So, went to his office and let me tell you, if, if I'm not God that made us speak through this man to me, I don't know who was because people, this man started saying some things like I was just in awe of his brilliance i was just in awe of everything that was just coming out of his mouth if this man did tell me to drink from river jordan to be cured i would have been it would have been my life's mission to find river jordan i kid you not because the way how he handled the situation and the course of action he he took was just listen when we tell you you're not going to understand what we mean right you're not going to understand what we mean no, but I understand. So we went to his office, right? Went to his office, and he he's not going to expound expound more on what this means, etc., etc. So me you know from the from the the examination room to his office, you know he leave your privacy address room. Um, obviously, after them those don't upload the whole just see your body, <laughs> but. On his way to his office now, he, I'm just thinking, oh my God, is someone going to tell me what's up? But I think the worst. But I said, Lord God, this a doctor going to do worst surgery. He's going to pop me with a bag of pill. And I've always been, I've always liked the more holistic approach to things. Because my mom tell me, if I'm from the league, I know to the mistakes, I'm from small. From, my, from when I was a kid, two decades ago, I've been a more like, oh, natural this, natural remedy, natural that, natural whatever, right? So, in my mind, I walk into his office, and I mean, I think one bag of pill, one bag of this, and I go to surgery. When I got to his office, he just, did, before he even tell me, okay, this is the plan, bring me to our take out note, and I start writing prescription. No, he sat me down, I was right in front of him, right at his desk, and he said, he, he started talking, so he said, First of all, I don't know if this video is going to be two parts because it's probably going to be pretty long, right? So, so he was just basically saying, just asking more questions, explain what cystic, what cyst on your ovaries is, and the causes for them and this and that. So this man just started to say some things and be like, "Memo, drop." You know that TikTok where they said, "We said the woman, the nigga was too stunned to speak." That was me. I was just like. He asked, have I ever had a yeast infection? And I have, I've had a yeast infection before. And herbs, we don't know about the foolishness because a lot of us are not very knowledgeable and a yeast infection is not an STI. Let me just say that this is not an STI. So before your brain goes down that path, let me stop you and correct you and inform you before it is not a STI. I've had a yeast infection when I was a virgin. 
she's not a STI, right? I can't do more of another video on I got guess feminine hygiene, feminine products, this that if you guys would like, but I guess it actually is not a STI. So he said he asked if I've had a yeast infection and the answer was yes. He also asked if basically everything the man asks, it's like he did me like a oh, who sent the man here? Sir, me know you like who sent you? Who sent you? How do you know this about me? He also asked if I if I know of this thing called fibrocystic um breasts. And I was just like that's where he got me. I was just like, I was just like, a lot of women get yeast, yeast infections, so it's not, it's not um, unusual to, to, to predict that the average woman has gotten one, even one once in her life. So, okay, that can slide. But that fibrocystic breast thing, I was just like, ah, uh -uh. you, Mr. Sir, no, you work for the CIA or something, no. So. Also, guys, I didn't tell you, but during this whole time, I was so basically fiber sixty breasts are like lumps in your breasts, lumps in your breasts. During this whole time, this whole scenario of struggling with this in terms of my health is that my fiber cystic, having fiber cystic breasts was also one of the scary things that was happening happening to me during this time. I started feeling lumps in my breasts. You know, you look at one self examination or or let me tell you. I used to feel sharp pains in my breast. Let me explain what I mean. I don't know if you guys have ever watched a movie. I, I can't remember the name of it. This there was this movie where this girl could this white girl. What's your name? She could feel like I feel it was a movie. So like when it when it was about to rain or when the time was getting cold or something like that, there was some change in the weather. She could tell by her boobs. <laughs> and of course that was a movie. It's like I have ESPN or something. My breasts can always tell when it's gonna rain. But I feel like that was my, I, I had a different type of sensation in my breast. Um, so I would enter a room, right? And without my arms get, before my arms would get cold or I know it was cold, it, there would be a sharp pain in my breast. So my breast would be the first indicator that, oh, this room is too cold for me. Or yeah, something like that. So, and there were this pain and they had, I had these lumps. Of course, young girl in her 20s, me a lumps in my breast but it's so all this was happening around the same time so pause on what the doctor was asking me i know maybe we don't have a backstory into this whole breast thing right so um feeling these lumps them time everything media spill up my money if you go still a card student but my mother would ask not look at money here and there and me i'm gonna make me take it and do x-rays for my breast at private doctors between seven grand and ten grand jamaica dollars College sweet, you know, when I go to supermarket, but my health comes first. My health always comes first. So I'm going to the doctor for this, and my um, I'm too I'm too young to do a mammogram. So it's not a mammogram that you do on persons of a certain age. You don't really do mammograms on older women. So I'm too young for a mammogram. So what it's called at my age, especially then, was a X-ray. So they X-rayed my breast, and I think I did. I think I did more than one x-ray so it was a couple months I just kept going back of course that's money each time but we just did that for it um, and that's where the doctor diagnosed me that I have fibrocystic breasts and basically it's just all from hormone imbalance right so and she was me, telling me what to do this that etc so now we're going back to this doctor right so at Yui, this doctor asking me. That's he, when he asked me that question. That's when I went. I was like, "You, sir, you are doing God's work right now. I can't send you." So, of course, my answer yes. But me astonished as to how do the how does he know this? So I said yes. And of course, at the time, I think too, my skin was, I had acne, so he was like hormonal acne. Did it, he was just, the man just read me, read me. And I was just there like, mm -hmm, yes. So basically, he's saying that I have an, a hormone imbalance. And that imbalance has happened because my estrogen levels have outweighed everything. So my estrogen levels are too high. So 
I don't know how much you guys know about hormone and blah, male hormones, female hormones, but everything should be balanced. So everybody talk about and my still things that talk about balance and hormone, pH balance, this, that, and the third. But your hormones should be balanced. And when one is out of whack, everything just it affects everything, right? So it would be start cleaning yourself from the inside. So my estrogen levels were too high at the time, and that is what was triggering the yeast infection. That is what was triggering the hormonal acne. That is what was causing the fibrocystic lumps in my breast. That is what was causing the ovarian cysts. And it was probably causing a whole bunch of other stuff that I wasn't even aware of because the symptoms weren't as bad or as obvious as those things, right? So when I said yes to the whole fibrocystic breast thing or whatever, the doctor went a step further and he was like, he wants to examine my breast. <laughs> Of course, I was a bit shy and whatever. I mean, I can smile now, but guys, you had no idea how, how depressed I was at this stage and during this whole phase. Because remember, at this time, you know, it's, it's, it, it just feels like I'm finally getting answers to this lifelong illness I've been having. And yeah, I'm finally getting answers, but we are not, we haven't started a course of action as it relates to a cure or a solution as it this is just some this is just information right as I'm getting and I'm trying to process but it's a step further than where I where I've, where I've been months prior right this is the first time in a long time I felt like somebody knows what is happening to me somebody know, finally knows what is happening and it's an information right you can't feel it you can't feel it because all the doctors, everybody else talk about UTI, pelvic this and they test me feet. But it's like, uh uh, me not have that. Me not have none of that. Me not have none of that. But finally, I felt like God answered my prayers because I've been praying for an answer. I've been praying for some sort of sign, something, right? And it was a long time coming. So at this time, based on the timeline, we're probably in late October, early November. They are both. Yeah, I think we in late October, early November. Probably early November at this time now, right? In, and man, yeah, early November for sure. And he said he wanted to examine my breast. So we went back into an examination room and he did it so as he thought and so that as I had confirmed the lumps were there that I have ever since the breast. So um, it just means that basically, obviously on the outside, it doesn't look that way. Um, but if you really feel and examine my boobs, they are lumpier than the norm, the average. I don't know what the average breast is supposed to feel like. I'm just gonna feel up some girl breast and nah, nah. So I don't know. But mine are like that, and um, it's because of hormone imbalance. Anyways, so he did that. He confirmed his theory, and the acne was there present, and I had we had a whole bunch. We had a whole lot of discussion around. Are about after running other things, so like I said, people, I was expecting this doctor to recommend surgery for the to remove the cyst to do that. Pat me put a bag of pills. So then he laid some good news on me. He's like, I also examined you for fibroids and um, what do you call that? Thing? He the doctor screened me for fibroids and endometriosis, and it was none of those. So that was excellent news. Um, so then he decided on the course of action to take, right? So he's basically saying that I need to start limiting the amount of chicken or meat I incorporate into my diet. He said he finds that Jamaicans eat a lot of chicken. We love chicken, we love chicken. We eat it excessively. We go to KFC, you buy three piece and that is it. Or a portion of chicken compared to all these meat, especially red meat, compared to vegetables etc is not it's not properly um, proportioned we have too much we have excessive amount of meat on our plate compared to our veggies or this or that right sorry um he's been sentient by the way he's from saint vincent so he said that i need to start limiting the amount of meat that is in my diet because the meat no is not the meat like back in the day the chicken no is not like the chicken back in the day Back in the day, when our four parents used to raise chicken and this and that, we were feeding them on natural stuff, organic stuff. So when us as the consumers eat it, it wasn't harmful to our body. 
now you're feeding chicken on a lot of hormones so when a chicken this is a guess by the way i don't raise chicken i'm not sure <clears throat> so when a chicken should take six weeks to develop or more you have chickens being ready in three weeks two weeks whatever matured um killed plucked all of that and ready to be market or are already put on the market especially by these big companies because the demand is so much that the supply needs to meet the demand and then there's mass, mass production how do you produce mass if you wait for one or two chicken to grow in a coop you won't make any money from that right you have to think how these corporations think so obviously they have to do something to allow for a fast growth and wider spread of um, what the consumers would like right makes sense so if the hormone is the intake of this hormone when we eat this meat that is causing the imbalance in our system hence why um, there's a lot of inflammation in the human body which is causing all of these illnesses right <clears throat> so I was like yo this man is speaking my language this is something that I've always like read about, researched about, felt, and you never really had anybody to express it with in, in that much sense. Like I said, the aunt that had passed, she and I bonded on um, things like this. So when, so he's like, okay, this is the course of action we're going to take. You're going to limit the amount of meat and let us go from there. Um, it's not going to be overnight, you're going to be hungry. You're, you're, it's going to take some time for your body to adjust to this new change in diet or lifestyle, right? He said he's tried this with a few patients before and they weren't as consistent. They left saying that they're going to do it, they've tried it and it was so hard for them to be consistent because they came back and they're like, Doc, I miss meat, I always feel hungry, this, that and the third. So there was no consistency to see if this thing could run its course and they effects it could have which is what he's predicting that it could um cause the the cyst to be shrunken or completely disappear because like i said it was at this stage where they were very small um but big enough to be on to, to well on the ovaries and painful obviously and um but surgery and all of that was also the question so it was more of a holistic approach to fix made me internally both versus back, packing me up with a bag of pill 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 i left that place i did not go to the pharmacy to fill no prescription and i was like whoa obviously still in pain yesterday but the information received and how i could relate to the doctor and how he really like was guiding me was the reassurance i feel that i needed right it was reassurance like i said i feel like it was an answer that i've been praying for for, for, for some time now because the one bugger test, one bugger nose, one bugger this, one bugger misdiagnosis, one bugger everything. So finally feeling some sort of comfort or connection when somebody is relaying something, it just felt that it was right. I left that day. Like I said, the doctor never said to throw it on my meat. He said limit, to start limiting. So if you used to have three pieces, but you don't do two, but you don't do whatever, right? And basically he was telling me that when you do feel hungry, because you are going to feel like hungry, because you basically switching up on your body right they used to three piece or two piece to feel full You're basically limiting that so your body's going to feel like it's going into starvation or whatever you need to um supplement that hunger with and healthier a healthier alternative eat more fruits and more roughage to your diet and more fibers and more this and more that he says he gave me a list of things that um or he told me a list of things that would help to absorb basically the excess estrogen that is in my bloodstream that is in my body and to balance about my hormones and things like sweet potato so he basically sent me to the market things like sweet potato all of them good stuff here more veggies more this more that cabbage all of those stuff basically um absorb excess estrogen and help to balance back your hormone and of course when i went home i didn't want to research so i went home and i wrote on a sticky pad like I said at the time, I was living in shared premises with a lot of college students. Um, I had my own room, though I shared bathroom with one person, but there were like several or yeah, several other persons in the entire household, like an apartment complex or a townhouse type of thing. Um, so I wrote my little sticking up to my room, and every time I go into the kitchen from my room or the bathroom, I looked at it. I was like, okay, this is what I should be eating. This is what I should be doing. This, that, and the third. 
doctor had also asked about exercising and at the time I wasn't exercising as I am now. I've always been big on fitness but with school and everything I had really put exercising on the back burner. I really wasn't exercising as I should so he also asked me to increase the level of exercise because sweating helps you anything that allow any physical activity that allows you to sweat helps you to get rid of really, get rid of sorry helps you to get rid of um, <laughs> toxins from your body and yeah so I needed to sweat I needed to be exercising to sweat and I, basically he was just giving me just a lifestyle change that I needed to implement if I wanted to live long and if I wanted to see changes in my internally and externally right so I left that day right I left that day I think this was about November 17 or November 16 I can't remember but somewhere around, somewhere around that time I left that day I had meat in my fridge <clears throat> I think prior to that like a couple days before a week before I had just gone to the supermarket also or my mommy had sent up meat for me because my mommy always you know first load season pass and not meat for me <clears throat> she's just went and waited so I made it have meat in my fridge and guys I went home that evening and I took I had two parcels of turkey neck and I took out one parcel and I curried it and I had a cousin at Utica at the time Matthew and I called him he used to always share my stuff with him or whatever right and when I called Matthew I said Matthew I have some holy for me for you. Meet me a puppy you know, or meet me wherever. I'm going to meet me. I'm going to give you one bag of meat. I'm going to give you one bag of meat. I'm going to smile. So the, and I was like, the last thing I ate, guys, the last time I ate meat, like I said, it was November 2017 and it was curry turkey neck. That was it. That was it. That was it. So, all right. Fast track now to we're into 2018. A few months into 2018, um, the doctor obviously wants to check on my my progression. So I went in for um, you know my regular routine pelvic examination. This that, and when we checked, I can't remember the exact date. I wish I remember the exact date for you guys. But when we checked a few months after that November 2017 discussion. And all of that um, when we checked in 2018 sometime in 2018 there was no cyst on my ovaries there was not I was just so happy I was just like oh my god you cannot be serious you cannot be serious I believed it it was serious but I was just like yo I was just you know how long more I got on it and that whole health scare and everything was like the extra push that I needed to like just push me forward if I said this is your reason this is your why this is your reason yeah I felt the urge here and there like uh, limited sometime here and there when I was like uh, but this is it cut it off now again but uh, but this was it and there was no cyst on my ovaries and guys let me tell you there was no cyst on my ovaries um my skin started to clear up me not in a no lie my acne did return after a time my acne did return after a time but it's a whole new discussion and it's going with you guys if you are so inclined and what i also what was most significant also in terms of what i could you know notice about myself because it's not until i went in i realized that there was no system my ovaries and that but you see from i started cutting out meat out of my diet I did not have period cramps. They were no more. And I used to have cramps like clockwork. Every month, cramps between this point and this point, and boom. I had no cramps. I would I would be preparing for them. I feel my period coming, it's here. I would be preparing for the worst. And there's no cramping. There's no menstrual cramps. And I was just in awe. I was just like, if me think about can't eat meat, no man. More wicked to myself. I don't love myself. I don't something to me think, you know, because I'm just like, you know how you feel like you're at, at death's door? I'm, I'm not exaggerating. I was in so much abdominal and I felt like you guys have no idea. I used to want to sleep and want to sleep. I used to pray and say, somebody just come knock me out just to make it the caress. I just want to be unconscious for a few seconds to get some rest. So when we wake up, 
during that whole time me asleep or me not slumber, me not feel no pain. Listen, man. And that's the whole truth, the real reason why I stopped eating meat. Now you guys see why I, there's no way I could have given a stranger or a regular person who just asked me randomly in a quick second all this, all this explanation. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you guys would like um, a video on how was it transitioning to from eating meat to not eating meat in literally a day or a split second. Like I said, I went cold turkey and that's what that meant. I didn't transition. I didn't limit, limit, limit. I completely like tossed everything out or gave it away and the next day I started afresh. Um, if you guys would like to see a video on that as it relates to my transition from a meat eater to a non meat eater if you guys would like to see some of the dishes i prepare um non meat dishes i prepare how i try to remain full while while on this lifestyle diet um if you'd like to have, have a more i guess full some list of things you can do or things you can consume i should say to absorb the excess estrogen in your in your diet etc just let me know and i'll make a video on that just leave a comment let me know if you've had any of these hormonal issues before how it's affecting you i do feel like this video will help somebody even if it's one person and i hope you guys like this video share it i hope you guys really learned something from this video and we i just feel like whatever that needs to be fixed or that is wrong with us as human beings the answer is already out there in nature it's already provided something you just need the right person to speak to or take the right course of action i am personally i don't believe in a bag of pill 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 and search search and cut every person and cut every person <sighs> only for them to not be fixed and to return you know what i mean so yeah and i was going through all of this i was suffering in silence as i said I was going through all of this while still like <laughs> ace in law school, um, having bar exams approaching, and other craziness that was just happening within the household. I was sharing, I'll explain that in another video. Um, I plan to share that also, etc. etc. And that's why I always love this song that says, When you see me smiling, please don't tear me down. When you see my blessing. I love that song. Hold on. behind it all so just be kind to someone because you really don't know what they're going through um that 2017 year was really crazy for me but you know some good things really did happen i lost one family member but then another was born the, my, my nephew was born in 2017 and he's such a light and such a joy <sighs> like god such a blessing to our family so when well, I mean, we're grieving and we're listening we're the next minute it's just like they can't help but smile. I cried at his birth because I was just like, oh my, it was, I was so happy. Um, but yeah, and of course, no one and I still do miss my aunt because there's so much that she didn't get to fulfill. There's so much of his happening with me that I'd love to share with her. And she's not here. Um, something like that took her away. And that's why when Chadwick, the Black Panther guy, had died and it was from colon cancer and they were, they were saying that how people were mean to him, how his weight was like this and that. And people were like, oh, he looks like this. And people were just mean based on his appearance. And I was just like, wow. Oh. People really don't know what you're going through. And I was like, oh, wow, that's the same thing that took out my aunt. And wow, my aunt was so young. My aunt was like, my aunt was like in her early 30s. No children. Yeah, but 
just put your health first don't be afraid if you feel like something is nobody knows your body more than you no doctor nobody not gonna know your body more than you do because I know two of them tell me say I did this or that or the third and it wasn't right but it was just showed me being persistent and I basically wasn't going to stop until I felt like all right this is where the book stops um being persistent you're going to know what they want to tell you nobody knows your body like you do only you really knows when something feels off and the slightest thing try and nip it in the body because you don't want it to escalate and go into something third because what some worse sorry what if i had ignored this what if i had ignored that who knows i never realized that all this time hormonal acne are certain little things they were all correlated you know what i mean you know what i mean so it's really good to really look within and try as as you may not, nothing is wrong with getting a first second third fourth fifth opinion if you may and yeah yeah and i'm all about the holistic approach i'm all about the holistic approach um at first um it depends on what you're like and what your preference is but that's just meant to take away i hope you guys really enjoyed this video i'm not sure as yet if i'll make it into a two-part video i'll see based on editing how lengthy it will be for one video um because i really don't want to lose your you guys interest i hope you've stuck with me throughout this entire time and again thank you so much for watching bye